Now, the baobab tree is very common in the northern part of Ghana. Until now, the uses of this magnificent tree had largely remained untapped. Some women in the Upper East region have, however, now discovered ways to produce oil and other edible products from baobab. Incidentally, poverty is rife in many of the areas where the magic tree abounds. John Hughes' Upper East correspondent Albert Sori in this report puts a spotlight on how baobab and shear nuts can possibly transform uh, or positively transform such a poverty-stricken communities through exploitation of these plants. The report is supported by the Media Foundation for West Africa. This is the craft center at the Sokabisi community in Bolgatanga. Women engage in making all kinds of crafts. But I am here to find out how the women here, most of whom are widows, are able to produce oil, toffees, and flour for making ice cream from baobab fruits. It is September, the lean season of the baobab tree. Fruits are unripe at this time and the women have taken a break from production. They, however, agree to do a little demonstration for our cameras. First, they break the shell of the barbap fruit and take out the content. They then pound it and sieve to separate the seeds from the powder. We get oil from the seeds. The oil is very good for the skin and can treat skin diseases. We also use the flour for making ice cream and beverages. Baobab is very good for our health. This work is often done with larger quantities of baobab. The flour and the seeds they obtain from here are taken to the Widows and Orphans Movement's Oil Extraction Center at Pusunamu, where the main production and packaging are done. Here at the Kandiga community, another group of widows are busy working in share processing. I meet them steaming some crushed share nuts in a pot. Once the work here is done, the product will be milled into paste and taken through other processes to come out share butter. Rebecca Atonyange is one of the leaders of this group. When I started this share butter business, I did not know so much about it. We used to just manage to get by until the widows and orphans movement came in. They took us to Tamale to give us some training, and when we returned, they brought some trainers to teach us some other things at Pusunamu. Two million. Two million. The Widows and Orphans Movement's Oil Extraction Center, located at Pusunamu in the Talense district, houses these machines used to complement the work of the widows and package the baobab and share produce into finished products. Director of the Widows and Orphans Movement, Fati Abigail Abdullahi, explained to Joy News how the equipment works. This is our filtering machine. And usually the oil, uh, this part of it would go into the oil. And then um, it will, the oil would go through these cloths that would filter it. And then the clean oil comes off these pipes into the panel. And then through this um, screw, we are able to um, have our clean oil, which goes into the 25 liter gallons, the yellow gallons um, we just saw. And this filter, again, can be, is used for the shear oil filtration. Also on display here are the finished products from the hard work of the widows. Here is the end product of uh, barber oil. We saw the yellow gallons, which was a 25 liters, and these are one liter containers. We have 250 ml, 120 ml, and 60 ml. And these are um, how we now sell to the different um, customers that we have, uh, individual users, those who do cosmetic formulations, those who would buy to export, and the list go goes on. We have the baobab powder, which is used for porridge and juices and smoothies. 
it has lots of vitamin C content, mm -hmm. good for the immune system. Ghana has signed on to the Sustainable Development Goals. This is a new universal set of goals, targets and indicators that the United Nations member states will be expected to use to frame their agendas and political policies by 2030. Sustainable Development Goal 1 focuses on ending poverty in all forms by the year 2030. The Upper East region is one of the poorest regions in Ghana, with women being the worst affected. Baobab and shea trees are abundant in every part of this region with varied economic potentials. The benefit is that for me as a widow, I am able to get money to cater for my children. Anytime they need something, I am able to get it for them. Otherwise, they will run away from school. If they need something for school and you're not able to get it for them, the girls would leave school and end up with the men. And the boys end up running to places like Kumase to work and stop schooling as a result. Currently, 465 widows work directly in these baobab and share processing projects. This is even when the processing plant here is currently using just a quarter of its capacity. According to Fatih Abdullahi, at full capacity, a lot more women can be directly and indirectly employed under the project. For now, we are able to use a quarter of our capacity as an industry, and this is mainly due to inadequate um, funding to be able to buy raw materials, to do more research in other areas and come up with more products for more women to be able to benefit. You know, Baobab actually fruits during um, December to March. And this is the dry season where most of our women migrate to southern Ghana to seek non-existing jobs. So it is an industry that if there is uh, more support in it, it can actually keep our women here um, in the north. As Ghana pushes towards ending poverty and achieving sustainable development goal one, the story of these women offers government and other industry players a brilliant opportunity for creating massive employment if the right feasibility studies are conducted and the needed capital pushed into this emerging industry and an avenue for ending poverty. For Joy News, Albert Sorry, Upper East Region.